Welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Now, those of you that follow my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tutvid, you should go there and subscribe if you haven't already. But those of you that are following the channel know that over the past number of months, I've been covering every single tool, feature, option in Photoshop, and we're, we still have a little ways to go. But we've gotten through most of the tools in the toolbox as of today's date, but we're up to the type tool. Now, instead of doing just the boring, here's the type tool, here's how you adjust kerning, here's how you go get fonts, things like that, I want to give you 18 of my favorite sort of secret hidden tips about the type tool, things that are going to help you use the type tool so much more effectively. So, let's get started right here, right now. Grab the type tool. The horizontal type tool is what I'm going to use. Now, typically when you add type, you just add type and boom, you start typing. Well, I don't want to do that. Instead, maybe I want to constrain my type within a certain area. So I drag out what's called the paragraph box. Now my type is within, you know, a box. All right. Now, if it starts to disappear, you can always adjust the edges of your box and you can see that the type automatically flows within the box as it is able to. Now, what if we don't have any type for that box? And what if the font is a fair bit smaller? Let's kind of size that down. We can do something where we go type paste lorem ipsum and fill it with a bunch of dummy text. That's pretty cool, nice little feature of Photoshop. Now, if we have our text selected, instead of taking our mouse and going all the way up and hitting the commit text check up here, we can use the hotkey command return, that'd be control enter on the PC, and boom, you commit your text wherever, whenever you like in Photoshop. One other cool feature is the ability to convert between paragraph and point text. Let me explain. Point text is when you just click anywhere in Photoshop and you say, this is some text. All right, and when you do that, you can see it just creates a line and it writes the text. No big deal. Let's commit that change. We have some this is some text sitting there on top of these mountains. Well, if we right click on that text layer and we choose convert to paragraph text, check out what happens when I double click this type layer to edit it. You can see I have that paragraph box around the text. So if I wanted to constrain it within a certain area, well, now I could do that. Let's say I need no constraints, I can right click and convert it back to point text and you can see we're back to just straight lines of text that can, in theory, go on forever and ever and ever side to side with no constraint. One of the other great things you can do with the type tool in Photoshop is type out more text, right, girl boating, okay, and we can position this however we like and then we take it to the client and they say, ah, you know what, I really need that text to be going up and down, so we can just double click on this and choose the change orientation icon and boom, boom, boom. The text is going up and down. I just added an additional space there between girl and boating to further set those words apart. So that little tiny icon there quickly will switch between horizontal and vertical text. Very helpful. So we've got our chunk of lorem ipsum text here, but let's say that this positioning is not quite correct. Of course, we could commit the change, grab the move tool, move the text, but if you hold down the command or control key while you have the live text selected, you can move the whole block of text just like so. Now, one of the other things you can do when you have a live a bit of text like this is you can hold down the command or control key at the corners to go ahead and scale the text up, which is kind of cool. Now, notice that it's not really uh, respecting the whole proportion thing, so I don't really like to do that. Uh, you can see I just hit command or control Z to undo that little change that I made. Uh, you can also do things like you know, hold the Alt or Option key to scale from the center. You can hold the Shift key and that will constrain uh, using proportions. Move around outside of your paragraph box and you can see the little rotate text uh, or the rotate icon appears and you can rotate your live text. And of course, you can always go in and re-edit the text if it needs to be re-edited. One of the other things aside from that that you can do is if you hold down the Command or Control key and hover somewhere around the bottom, I don't know, I find bottom right corner of a tan uh, tangent handle, an anchor point or control handle, you can actually skew your text and sort of do this uh, distortion to it, which is kind of uh, interesting. So you can see I can grab a whole angle of my text and just kind of give it this really weird skew. And you might look at this and say, oh, that's not live text. How are you ever going to edit that? Well, it actually is live text. If you double click, you can just highlight a specific word, go in there and edit it to your heart's delight. Of course, once you have text in any document, you might want to change the color of it. So what you can do is open up your character panel, which by the way is window character, and you have your little color icon here. Or what you can do is let's say I want to mimic maybe like this, oh, I don't know, peachy color in the sky. I can use my eyedropper tool to set my foreground color to that peachy color, and then I can just use my fill hotkey, option delete, that would be alt backspace on the PC, and it's going to fill your text. And if I further want to go and just edit specific words or even letters within my type, I can double click on my text layer. I can select the type that I want to change the color of, open up my character panel, 
use that color thumbnail and select. Maybe I want to make it that green or maybe that green is not really noticeable enough. We want to make it lighter. Maybe we're going to go with like a blue color, something like that. Hit OK and then hit the check icon to commit the change and you can set colors for specific letters or whole words or whatever you want even within a block of type. One of the other great things is you can change the size of your text. Of course, here in the character panel, you can change the size of it if you like, right? And you're going to see more text is going to appear because I'm changing the actual size of the text within that type box. But let's say we only want to keep the text that we see, but we want to make this text a little bit larger. Well, we can actually free transform a block of text by going edit free transform and we can hold down my shift key and just drag it to make it larger and go ahead and set it back in place and if we open up our character panel you can see it has scaled up the actual size of the text 241.26 points is where it is now and of course like I said you can always change the size of the text from here if you like as well but just know you can free transform your text as well one other quick thing that I like to always point out to people is the super fast and easy ability to bold, italicize, or underline type using the character panel. Of course, you can just set the font to its italic or bold setting, but there's an additional boldness setting here in the character panel. There's an additional italicizing uh, setting. They're sort of like faux bold, faux uh, italics. You can also underline or throw, throw a strike through uh, onto your text, but I think one of the most underrated icons here is the ability to just in one click capitalize every single letter in your bit of type. So don't forget this row of text transform icons here. You've got superscript and subscript and different stuff like that as well. A lot of great stuff to check out right here in the character panel. Now one of the other great things you can do with the text tool is you can apply type on a path. So let's do this. Grab the ellipse tool and let's just hold down the shift key, drag out a nice big circle. I've applied a red five point stroke to this shape and I know it's a shape, not a path, but a shape begins as a path. So the path is there. I'm just creating a shape so we have sort of this red line that we can see is there as we apply the text to it. Next grab the text tool, just the regular old text tool and click anywhere on this path. You can see I get that little serpentine uh, path that's added to my text icon. I can just type this is some type on a path exclamation point all right commit the change now of course just like with any other bit of type you can double click on it you can change the size but we can make the size maybe a little bit bigger bring it up to 300 great okay you can also grab the path selection tool now I'm gonna have a tutorial coming out on this tool in the next couple days you can click on the text and drag it wherever you like, right? Shift it around the circle. But you can also just grab the text and pull it to the inside of the shape if you like. So that's kind of neat. And then you can rotate it again on the inside of the shape. Now, because it's so crunched together, you might want to open up your character panel and add some letter spacing or something so it's a little bit more readable. But just know that you can add text to a path. I'm going to delete this text now. Let's check out something else. I'm just going to drag it down here to the garbage. You can also place text within a shape. So if I grab the text tool again, I get my little serpentine icon, but if I move a little bit closer to the inside, I get this whole shape surrounding my text tool. If I click on that, I'm actually going to be placing type within this shape. So I'm going to add just lorem ipsum type, paste lorem ipsum, and well, a couple things here. I'm going to hit Command or Control A to select all my text. I have all of that crazy letter spacing, so I'm going to set that to zero first and foremost. And I'm also going to downsize my text maybe to about 150. And you can see if I commit the change, I have all of my text staying within the shape. I can even hide the red outline because it's got its own path that it's working with, this text. And I now just have my text in this invisible circle here in the middle of my image. So you can add text. You can add text along a path or within a path. So I've got this block of text here and there's kind of a neat feature within Photoshop which is very underused. You can double click on the layer icon here for the text layer to highlight all the text and you can right click, well make sure we select it all, right click and choose check spelling. And Photoshop's going to go through and we can say ignore, ignore, ignore. And obviously every word is going to show up just about as being a misspelled word. Uh, or what you can do is with the text layer select, you can always go edit, check spelling just like that. And Photoshop will go ahead and open it up and just begin to go through. It can make suggestions for you, all things, uh, all kinds of things like that. And that can be a very, very useful feature. Now you may have noticed when we were messing around up in the edit image, there's also a find and replace text option. We can just bring that up. It's going to look through our text layer here. We've got this text layer. I'm going to choose find the word sit and change it to the word burger. All right, we can choose to search all layers, uh, make it case sensitive, just edit a whole word only, ignore accent marks, things like that. I'm going to hit change all and you're going to see that uh, no more found, one replacement made, okay, and you can see what was sit is now 
burger. Another thing you can do in Photoshop with text is when you've got text placed and it's a live text layer, you can always right click on that layer and convert it either to a work path or a shape layer. So obviously if I convert it to either one of these, let's just convert it to a shape. You can see we no longer have live editable text, but we can still do stuff like double click on it to change the color, right? Maybe make this a pink. All right. And it's still like vector text. So I can go ahead and scale it down or I can scale it up huge and you don't have to worry about losing detail. Now you may ask, why would I ever want to change my live text into the sort of the shape layer? Well, the reason is because you can play with the direct selection tool and grab specific anchor handles and go ahead and actually start to tweak the text itself. So I can maybe, you know, join all these words together, right? With some kind of, you know, I don't know, just, you know, create some crazy text effect here in Photoshop where I'm going in and starting to edit my type by beginning with an actual typeface and using the path or the direct selection tool, excuse me, to go in and edit the actual anchor points of this shape. The same goes for that uh, work path option that you have. If you wish to convert this to a work path, you can save it in the paths panel and you'll have a path you can always go back to and work on later. So just know if you want to create custom text, sometimes you can begin with a typeface that you really like convert it to a shape or a work path and go ahead and edit it that way and still maintain a lot of editability and scalability as far as it being vector. So let's go ahead and pretend like we're working on a website here and I'm creating some text here on this layout. I'm going to say this is for my website, right? We've got this text. Uh, maybe I'll scale it up a little bit larger and I move it into position kind of like right here. Let's say we just, we, we absolutely love the text like right there. What we can do is we can go up to the type menu or actually maybe this is easier. Just right click on the layers panel or the, yeah, in the layers panel on that type layer and just choose copy CSS. And you can see here, I'm going to just use my type tool and I'm going to drag out a, a bit of paragraph text here. I'm going to size this down a little bit smaller. If I paste this, you can see I have actual CSS markup, which uh, Photoshop has created for me which would regenerate this exact bit of type using CSS. You can see it's created a CSS class, which we could drop anywhere in our HTML document. Now, obviously, you need to make sure you have the font family installed on your website and things like that. But all of this code, just by simply right-clicking and choosing Copy CSS, can be taken from a Photoshop comp or a Photoshop layout you're working on and paste it into something like Dreamweaver or Coda or Brackets or whatever your uh, HTML or code editor is. So just remember, right-click on a text layer, choose Copy CSS. It's easy and it's kind of cool. I think one of the often forgotten features, uh, I guess it's a feature within Photoshop, viewing option maybe, is the ability to change the size of the font preview for your font drop-down menu. Maybe you're, it's, it's difficult for you to see, or just personally, I like to be able to see a huge example of the text that I'm going to choose. It gives me a better idea of the text or the font or typeface that I'm picking out. You can go type font preview size and choose huge if you want. And then you can see here, I've got a much, much larger example of uh, the text which I'm going to select. Now, disclaimer about this feature, it's available in, in older versions of Photoshop and all that great stuff, but it can tend to be a memory hog depending on how many fonts you have installed on your computer and how powerful your computer is. So just know if you're trying to squeeze as much performance out of Photoshop, you might actually want to turn font preview size down a little bit smaller and rely on something else to preview your fonts in. But if you've got a beast of a machine, you don't have a ton of fonts, crank that size up. It can be really helpful to have when you're throwing text around in a design that you're working on. And last but definitely not least, you can always grab a type layer, right click and choose convert to smart object. By doing this, you wrap that live text layer in a smart object and to a smart object, you can do things like apply a filter, right? We can go pixelate mosaic and throw kind of a crazy mosaic filter over our text. You couldn't do that to live text, right? You can see a smart filter. I can always shut it off. I can go in, well, if I turn it on, I can double click on mosaic and, you know, change it, make it a little bit different. That makes it a little bit difficult to read though. Uh, one of the other things we can do is we can go edit free transform. And if we do that, it's going to say, hey, look, smart filters are going to be temporarily disabled. Okay. They're going to come back. Don't worry. We can right click on this and choose perspective, right? We can make this side of the text a bit larger. Maybe make that side of the text a little smaller, right click again, Go distort, drag this bottom corner out just because we can, right click and go warp again, uh, or not warp again, we're just going to go warp for the first time, drag these tangent handles around, we're just going to kind of, I don't know, maybe make the text here, almost follow the tree line a little bit, Do the same thing down here, bow the text in on this side a little bit, maybe bow it up on the bottom, give it a little shape, 
right? And then commit that change. It's going to bring back the mosaic filter, which is cool. But then what if we show this to the client? And they're like, oh, I like it. But the actual phrase is grab the boats and we want the text to be green. Well, we can double click on our smart object. It opens what's called a .psb file, which is just like a PSD, but within another PSD. And we have our live text. Grab the boats. Commit that change. Now, obviously, I need to make this text a little bit smaller. So I'm going to set this to like 875 right off the bat. That's probably a little bit too small. So I'm going to size it up to about 915. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to change the color to a green like we talked about. Pretty bright green too. Commit the changes. And I'm just going to use my move tool here. You can see I have the move tool selected. I'm going to nudge my text upward a little bit just so it's kind of as close to being centered within this .psb file as possible. Command or Control S to save it. Command or Control W to quit or not to quit, to close that document. And you can see our text, it's grab the boats and it's green. And if they say, hey, we hate the mosaic filter, hey, no problem. We can shut that right off and it's just grab the boats. So if I undo, you can see we had grab the boat. But if I put it back to the way that I have it now, grab the boats. So by wrapping your live text layer in a smart object, you open up the world to what you can do to that text layer and you still preserve the editability of the text layer instead of just creating a text layer and right clicking and choosing, you know, rasterize type. Well, it's not this is going to be rasterize layer because it's a smart object. But if this was a text layer, this would say rasterize type. You don't want to do that because then you just have pixel shapes and immediately you begin destroying them. So that's it. We didn't just talk about the boring stuff to do with the type tool. In fact, we didn't talk about the basics of the type tool. I just fed you my 18 favorite tips and tricks with regard to the type tool, things you can do with the type tool, things that are going to make you uh, much more successful using the type tool. So for the type tool in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.